slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. I've got aces, and after two limps, I raise to 15, and before I can even finish placing my bet, Small Blind whips in his last 54 bucks. The two limpers fold, and now it's back to me with something of a conundrum. While some argue that Ace Ace Offsuit is the best starting hand in No Limit Texas Hold'em, I'm not so convinced. What if he's got three aces? Or Pocket Royal Fizbin? Or, heaven forfend, the Brad? But if he's got it, he's got it. And I'm sick of everybody calling me tight. So let's gamble. I call. Oh. This is making the vlog. Mm, doubtful. Mm. Yeah, I guess I was a bit out of line. And I'm not alone in that opinion. <laughs> you donkey playing aces like that. You're such a donkey. I am a donkey. <laughs> I overplayed it. I overplayed it. It's okay. It's a coin flip right there. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fold that time. I just felt like you, you might be strong. And just as I'm about to move on, I suddenly get that sinking feeling where doubt starts to creep in. Was it me who overvalued his cards? Or maybe, and hear me out, maybe it was the small blind. Just to rest my worries, I ask him for his name, and he says it's Kevin. Hold on, Kevin? All right, now I take back everything I said before. Kevin overplayed his hand, not me. Not to state the obvious, but it's common knowledge that only very specific players should three bet shove with only very specific holdings. It couldn't be more poker 101 that Kevin should only three bet shove with king seven, not king eight. That's only if your name's Kate. Are we just straight up ignoring our preflop charts now? Kevin should only shove with King Seven, just like OJ Simpson with Jack Deuce, or Serial Spokes Rabbits with Trey Six, or women with 510. What a rookie move by Kevin. But I guess like the saying goes, even a broken Kevin wins two pots a day. As for me, listen, sometimes you just lose with aces, but it's not game over yet. Tonight, aces is the best starting hand in Hold'em. Kevin's time? It's over. It's done. This is your time. Now I don't want to hear any more about the greatness of Kevin. This is aces. Go out there and take the pot. I've got aces, raised to 15, and get two colors. After this flop and a big blind check, I bet over half pot, and both players call. On this turn, we all check. And after this river, and two checks, cutoff cuts out 60. If this guy's bluffing, he needs to get past two players, either of whom could have a big club, so I guess he must have it. Of course, it's only later that I learned that this player almost never has it, that his favorite hand is 9-8 offsuit. I said, Ooh, I like your size. And that here, he had nothing but a busted gut shot draw. Hey, give him credit, he saw weakness and exploited it. On the bright side, he did subscribe to my channel and became a huge fan. So 40 bucks for a new citizen of Slow Poker Nation? I think that's pretty decent ROI. That means if I want to hit 10,000 subscribers, it'll cost me a little over 200 grand. On second thought, join my Patreon. Anyway, listen, sometimes you just lose with aces, but it's not game over yet. Those aces gonna be like two angels on your shoulder, see? And if you ever get hit, and you feel like you're going down, those angels gonna whisper in your ear, they're gonna say, Get up, you son of a bitch! I've got aces. Raise over a straddle to 30, and get two callers. After this flop and a big blind check, I bet 45, and cutoff calls. On this turn, I bet 125, and cutoff raises to 325. If this player was 100 years old, or if he was... me? I'm folding right here, but this guy has been a real mixed bag. Every time he raises, it's all or nothing. He's playing any two, he's bluffing at a comically high frequency, and he's more than happy to get it in with Squadoosh. I just witnessed all or nothing raise big over a straddle with Queen-9, call a massive three bet against another WTFer who had five deuce, and it all went in on the turn, where all or nothing had nothing. Nothing but Queen high and a bad flush draw. So here, all or nothing could easily have, well, all of it or none of it. Best case, he's got some draw or even less than some draw. Worst case, he's got a set or king nine. So I'm either way ahead or drawing way thin. But specifically because of All or Nothing's reputation, I feel compelled to make this call. After this river, I check and he bets 550. On the one hand, another five means it's even less likely he's got pocket fives, but he could still have nines or threes. A part of me wishes this river was a blank because then I'd lose to all value and only beat a stone bluff. But the five now means that the nine combinations of king nine, all very much in this guy's range, have been counterfeited and I win. And the red chip poker people say that given my read on this villain, the GTO correct option is to call. And while I'm not necessarily a favorite against his river barreling range, it's simply the right price, especially against someone known for heaving air balls. Of course, my recent record with aces hasn't been too thrilling, so I almost throw in the towel. But All or Nothing's rap sheet leads me to hold on to the towel and throw in something else. Alright, I'll pay off. Call. 
Turns out this time, All or Nothing has the former. He's got all the fives, all the chips, and... Did I make it onto the block? Yeah. YouTube fame beyond his wildest dreams. Hey, gotta hand it to him. He played a pretty clever trick on me, going buck wild earlier with Queen High, laying the groundwork to get him paid by me later on. Hats off to you, All or Nothing. As for me, listen, sometimes you just lose with aces, but it's not game over yet. When pocket aces went down in the first two hands of this episode, everybody wrote us off. Everybody. And yet here we are. Every man in his life loses with aces. He's gonna play them and he's gonna lose. But what makes him a man is that in the midst of this battle, he does not forget that sometimes he gets outflocked. This 2-5 game is not over. This battle is not over. So let's hear it again. Together. Pocket aces, sometimes. Let's go! I've got aces. Raised to 15, and there's all or nothing. 3-betting me to 45. I 4-bet to 185, and he calls. This tends to be a hand like pocket jacks, so when I see a paintless flop, I should be down betting, but instead bet too high, and he calls. Honestly though, that sizing is kind of irrelevant, as no matter how I sliced it, on this turn I'd always have under pot behind. And sure, he could have flopped yet another set on yet another dry board, where he could yet again slow play, but for all the times he's got pocket tens, there are more times he's got jacks or queens and just can't get away. And in poker, they say you can't be afraid of monsters under the bed. If he's got jacks or queens, he'll be in a tough spot. And if he's ahead, well, he's ahead. And I guess I'll know soon, based on how quickly he decides. I'm all in. You got it? Tens? Yes, I am aware it happened twice. Sorry, man. Just luck. Variance. Yes, I am aware of the concepts of luck and variance. I am also aware that sometimes monsters are under the bed. Yeah, I was here the whole time. By the way, you should vacuum under here. I love late night cheese its too, but yikes. Well, good for you, all or nothing. Seems like every time we face off, it's all or all. As for me, listen, sometimes you just lose with aces, but it's not game over yet. We're fighting for our right to win with aces. And should we win the day, today will no longer be the day known as the day we lose a whole bunch of cash. But the day we declare in a gravelly voice we will not go quietly into the night. We will not go down without a fight. We're going to win. Today, we celebrate a day in the future at some point down the road where people don't flop cents on us in four bent pots. What's the best starting hand in Hold'em? Since I'm striking out in Maryland, I try my luck in Texas, where I've got aces, raise to 15, and get called by the blinds. After this flop, and a small blind check, big blind bets out of flow for 20. I've played with this player before. He's definitely got a cowboy hat, and he's definitely behind. But small blind's in the mix. Otherwise, I would absolutely raise here. Since we're three ways, I have to tread lightly. So I call, as does small blind. After this turn, and another small blind check, and 50 bucks from Honky Tonk Donkey Donk. Texas burn. I'm frustrated because this would be far easier heads up, as big blind clearly has nothing while small blind might have something. I'm this close to folding because I just feel it coming, but I call, and lo and behold, here it comes, as small blind pulls the patented, super sad side check raise. 400. 400. Yeah, not gonna fall for that one, pal. I don't know if you watch my show, but this ain't my first reverse tail rodeo. You need to understand that everything you do at the poker table conveys information. So thank you, small blind, both for paying tuition for my masterclass and for making my decision clear. Want to guess my hand? <laughs> what in pocket jacks? <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. You beat me fair and square with a premium. As for me, listen, sometimes you just lose with aces. But it's not game over yet. Respect the Rockets. And tame the junk. Tame it. And say, no, you will not outflop me. No, you will not win this game with a five off suit. I am in charge. I am the one who says, yes, no, fuck. next hand. 
I've got aces. And after a $6 straddle, UTG one limps, cutoff limps, and button limps. And since we're playing 1-3, I figure 10x the big blind should be high enough to narrow the field to heads up, so I bet 30. But I'm quickly reminded that I'm in Texas, as I get called by the straddler, the first limper, the second limper, and the entire population of Limptown, a quaint, lovely suburb just a few miles outside Austin. Low walk score, but great schools. On a flop that looks fine by me, I bet 45. And the first limper calls. I assume he just has some king, but after this turn, an alarm bell starts ringing. So I check, and he bets 100. With some trepidation, I call, and after this brick river, and a check by me, limp caller bets 225. Okay, let's really think this through. There shouldn't be a 3 in anyone's 10x preflop calling range. The only conceivable hand that would even resemble a premium is Ace-3 of diamonds, given no other suited Ace-3 is possible. So I take a good long look at this limp caller, and I'll be honest, he gives off a real potent vibe that he's one of those types who can't get enough of Jack King off. I mean, it's pretty clear he doesn't just like Jack King off, he loves Jack King off. Jack King off is all he thinks about all day, every day. If someone tells this guy at any moment that Jack King off is an option, he's got one free hand. Where can he sign up? And since a three doesn't make any sense, maybe he assumes that his bi-hourly passion for Jack King off has worked out perfectly here and that he three outed my ace king on the turn. And I really hope I'm right because at this point my pocket aces are due, right? They're due. You got a three, you got a three. 225? 225. Uh, I call. So here's the thing. It's not about that he should always fold from earliest position with steaming garbage like 4-3 offsuit. It's not about that he should never limp call 10 times the big blind with said steaming garbage. It's not about that he claims due to some implied donkey pot odds that he had to call my preflop raise because he was last to act when in reality there were two limpers behind him. What is it about, you ask? It's about his face. The look on his face. Oh, you know the look. Yeah, you're all more than familiar with the look. That obnoxious grin of full-blown, uncut smug. That look that only has one connotation, and that connotation is, oh yeah. I'm a poker savant. And not only does the look show up at all, but it stays plastered up there for a full hour. Look, if you crack aces with 4-3 offsuit, there are multiple approaches to take. Let's review them, shall we? Show a little sympathy. You don't have to apologize or say anything that even resembles an apology. But every poker player knows the agony of cracked aces. Even you know that feeling, Captain Jacking Off. There's always the option of just a dash of nice guy contrition. It's not required, but it can't hurt. Just sit there, minus the face. Resist the urge to roll out the self-satisfied smirk that nobody wants to see. Me or anyone else at the table. Or really anyone, anywhere, under any circumstances. It's a difficult undertaking, but with practice and resolve, it can be avoided. Or let your asshole flag fly. So you're going with C, huh? Well, that's your decision. And hey, you did win. But don't get it twisted. You're no poker prodigy. You limp called with two napkins and hit a lucky flop. Nobody's impressed. Fine, I'm not impressed, but so be it. Congratulations. As for me, listen, sometimes you just lose with aces, but it's not game over yet. Well, gentlemen, when the shit hits the fan, some play aces and some play 4-3. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna reward 4-3 and destroy rockets. Are you finished, Mr. Slade? No, I'm just getting warmed up. Now, I don't know who plays at this place in Round Rock, Phil Hellmuth, Phil Ivy, Phil Collins, whoever, but their spirit is dead. Someone here, and I won't say who, limp called pre with trash. And after they crushed the spirit of a man with a hand of integrity, 4-3 made a face, and that face was stupid AF. Sir, you're out of order. Out of order? I'll show you out of order. You don't know what out of order is, Mr. Jack King off. I'd show you, but I have a career. I have a family. I also play poker and I don't have a lot of time. Maybe I'll have better luck in North Carolina where I've got aces and facing one limp and a cutoff raise to 20. I three bet to 65 and cut off calls. After this flop and a check, I bet 70 and he calls. After this turn and another check, I bet 125 and he jams. <sighs> okay, so here's what's tough. This guy's playing style is unpredictable. One time he flopped a set three ways on a wet board and slow played it all the way to the river. Another time he opened with nine seven of clubs, called a massive three bet, flopped a flush draw and facing a large bet, just shipped it because he had one too many outs. And he rivered one of those outs and sent pocket aces packing. So if he slow plays his monsters and fast plays his nothings, doesn't that mean I should learn from the intel that I've gathered and call? Of course, most of me wants to fold because whether he's ahead or behind, I'm pretty sure I'll lose regardless. But a smaller part of me just feels like this won't really happen again with aces, will it? Only one way to find out. I called. You just slop it? Jax? Hey, at least he'd have won with a flush draw too. That's a silver lighting. Well, listen, sometimes you just lose with aces, but it's not game over yet.
this isn't over, we're not done here, there's nothing we can't accomplish. If we, give it our, if we give it our all, there's no challenge we can't overcome as long as we do it together. There's no I in team. You just have to believe, believe in yourself, believe in each other. Maybe it all seems hopeless, but we can fight real hard. I can see it in your eyes, resolve, persistence, courage all the attributes necessary. There's no quit in this group of heroes. Nothing is impossible. Do you believe in miracles? I do, uh, most definitely. We all just need to give it 110%. And if we do, I promise you victory will be ours. So once more with feeling, clear eyes, full hearts, I've got aces. Raised to 15, cut off folds, button folds, small blind folds, big blind folds. Oh. My. God. And that'll do it for episode 17 of Slow Poker. Please like, subscribe, comment below, and hit that notification bell. And please join my Patreon. A contribution of just $5 will lessen my pain by exactly 0.154%. We all just need to give 0.154%, and if we do that, oh my goodness, all the things we can achieve. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker. Great moments are born from great opportunity. Should I subscribe? Yes! There's like a circle, just tap it or click it. I lose with aces like a thousand times, nobody's subscribing. Just shut it down, just shut the whole thing down. Yeah, like there's probably a button that just says shut down. Just...